Hello, and welcome to the Z Hut. Today, we're going to take a look at how you can connect to two separate Arduinos using MIT App Inventor. Now, MIT App Inventor is very handy for writing Bluetooth apps to control your Arduino boards. But what a lot of you might not know is you can actually connect to two Bluetooth devices at the same time. Now, this would allow us, if say we had two different Bluetooth controlled uh, outlets in your home, you could control both of them from the same app instead of having to have two different apps. Now, unfortunately, the maximum number to connect to at the same time to this point so far is two. I'm not sure if they're going to try to make it possible to connect to more or not. But uh, at this time, yes, it's only two. So what we'll do is I'll demonstrate it working here. Then uh, we'll go over to the computer and uh, go open up MIT App Inventor 2. And I'll show you how we're doing it on there. And it's real easy. It's, none of this is, is difficult at all. And uh, what we'll do is we'll run over the app. And then uh, we'll look, take a quick look at this code in case you want to try this project out real quick before you start using it with your own project. Um, <clears throat> it's a good little way to test it out and see how it works. So I've just simply got the two Arduino boards, the two different Bluetooth modules, and I have two LEDs, two different colored LEDs. So what we'll do is first I just set it up. Now you could also set this up to auto connect if you know your address for your Bluetooth modules. And in a previous video I've done, um, just look at my channel, you'll find it on how to auto connect your Bluetooth. And this will work for two as well as just for one. But for this I got it set up so you where you just manually connect. So we'll connect to our first Bluetooth, HC06 Bluetooth. It might take just a moment. <coughs> Come on. Oh. It does that once in a great while, I've noticed. Especially beans, I have everything so close together too that can interfere just a little, but it does work. Then we got to connect to our number two. It looks like it's connecting. Yeah, I should move these apart a little bit. Yeah. Sometimes when they're this extremely close together, they'll interfere a little bit. But when if you more than like a couple feet away from it, I usually don't have any problems. But it'd be kind of hard to shoot the video with it way apart and for you to be able to see it. There we go. It connected. So now I just simply got two buttons, <coughs> one for the first LED. You can see it came on, and one for the second LED. As you can see, it does work. We are connected to two separate Arduino devices using one app. So what we'll do next is we will go over to the computer and uh, we'll take a look at MIT App Inventor 2 and how to do this. So I'll see you there in just a moment. Okay, I have MIT App Inventor opened up, and this is the app. So um, <coughs> what we have is two different buttons, and that's for connecting. And I've set this up to use virtual screens, because if you use multiple screens, each time you go to a different screen, it disconnects the Bluetooth, and you have to reconnect. Now, like I said um, earlier, I have another video on auto-connecting. So if you wanted to use multiple different screens, um, you can use that feature. So when you switch the screens, it'll disconnect, but then it'll go and automatically reconnect to that Bluetooth device. But uh, like I said, we've got two connect buttons here. And uh, then what we have is two Bluetooth clients. You have to have a Bluetooth, Bluetooth client for each of the Arduino HC06s or whichever module you're using. I, uh, I go with the HC06s and 05s because they are really cheap. All right, now I'm going to display the hidden components since I said we we're using virtual screens. And what happens is after we connect to both, and it checks, and once both of them are connected, the Connect 1 and Connect 2 disappear, and LED 1 and LED 2 shows up. So let's go over to the Blocks Editor. And we'll take a quick look at it. If you've um, 
used the Bluetooth with Arduino before, you probably don't need to go any further into this because you're just using two Bluetooth clients. And how I have it set up, I'll get down here. Um, when button one is clicked, it's calling Bluetooth client one, and I'm just sending a two byte number to the Arduino board through the HCL6. And I'm using the same number on both because I just, I use the same sketch in both. But beans, you know, each one is connected separately. It won't turn both on or both off. It's just whichever one, whichever button you hit, um, like if you hit button two, it sends to Bluetooth client number two, that number. Pretty simple, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> like I said at the beginning of the video, this is not very complicated at all. Um, I will have a, uh, a copy of the blocks on the website, and you can find a link to that uh, in the description below. And I'll also have the Arduino code and some more information. But um, yeah, we're just uh, connecting to the Bluetooth device normally, like you normally would, but instead of just having the one, we are doing it twice. And then, as you can see right here, I have this if statement with an and, and you can connect to Bluetooth number two first, then number one, or you can collect number one, and then number two. And it checks when you connect both, or when, whichever one you're connecting to, it checks to see if the other one is already connected. And if it is, it is setting those buttons, the connection buttons, which are the list pickers, to visibility to false. That's all there is to it. And then it's setting the, uh, the button for turning the LED off and on to true. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything else we need to go over here in MIT app inventor 2 and like i said i'll have a copy of the blocks diagram here on the website if you would like to try this out otherwise let's go over to the arduino ide and i'll just super quick run through the sketch um just in case you want to try try this out um with the two leds before you use it with your own project so i will see you there in just a moment All right, I have the Arduino IDE opened up here, and this is the sketch, and that's the whole sketch. There's not a whole lot to this. Now, depending on what you're going to be using this to control, your sketch is probably longer, but this is just um, to show you how to use it, you know, just for with two LEDs, one on each board, just so you can get the hang of it, and then you can apply this to your, your own project. So what I got here is I've got uh, integer, um, oh, I wasn't thinking when I did that. Usually I define them. You don't need to use an integer, but that's just the uh, the pin the LED is on. So you can do defined or constant int or int, any of them will work. But uh, we have the LED on pin 8. Um, you could also use the built-in LED, and that's pin 13 if I remember right, if you didn't want to hook up an external LED, but either way will work. If you wanted to use the built-in one, just change the eight. And like I said, I do believe it's pin 13 that the built-in LED is on on your Arduino boards. And then we have int, which is X. And I got this set at one to start with. Now what uh, I'm using this for is because I'm using the same button to turn it off and on, and it just keeps track of the state of the button. If it was last turning it on or if it was last turning it off and that's how we're able to turn it off and on using the same button and of course we're setting the pin mode for our led to as an output then we're starting up the serial and running 9600 now we got here um <clears throat> if serial dot available which means it's checking to see if there's any serial data available is greater or equal to two it's going through and it's running this little formula here now the reason for this is i'm using a two byte number in my apps um you could do a one but sometimes i get some really big numbers if i have lots of different controls or variables or sensor readings coming in it works a lot better to send two byte numbers from the android device through mit app inventor and what this little formula does is the Arduino board itself is receiving one byte numbers. So it's just taking and converting those two one byte numbers that are coming in 
and combining them to make the two byte number that you sent. So um, if you're sending two byte numbers, just stick this little chunk of code in right here and don't change anything or it will not work correctly. Then what we're doing is we are checking if the value, oh, that popped up, if the value, and we were sending a number of 1,000, and if X equals 1, that means the LED is off, so it's digital writing it high. And then it sets X to 2, so then we've got our else if statement. It goes through, and if the, the number that's coming in is 1,000, and the X equals 2, it is turning the LED off. Now a little tip here, when I was putting this together I had drank a couple beers and I forgot to put the else. And I had the two if statements and I ran it. Hit the button, I'm like what the heck's going on? I went back and looked at the sketch here and I'm like oh how did I make that little stupid mistake? I forgot to put the else because what will happen it will come through and it will see it's the number it's getting is a thousand x is one so digital rates led high sets the two then it checks because it was another if the value that was received was a thousand and x equals two it turned it off and it goes through and did it so quick you didn't even see the led turn on <laughs> hey, even the best of us make some mistakes once in a while so i thought i'd share that with you so that you don't accidentally make that mistake after your if statement and there's going to be something else it checks for. Do an else if, unless it's another value you're checking for that does not have anything to do with this part of the, the sketch, then it's okay to use an if. Otherwise, another thing, by using else ifs, it does run through quicker because if you know it checks and the if it does this one, well, then it skips this because it's else if. It just skips it and restarts. All right, well, I hope you found this information useful. Um, if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And like I said, uh, I'll have a copy of the Arduino sketch and a copy of the block diagram from MIT App Inventor. I'll have all that on the website and just look in the description below, click on it, and you can download it all from there. So I would like to thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut today. I hope you have a great day, and remember, have fun building.